Welcome to Modern Day Warrior. Today we have a very exciting guest, Veronica Pang. She has over 30 years experience in investment banking and private banking, managing customers that are central banks to ultra high net worth clients who have over 100 million US dollars in assets. Welcome. Thank you, Kimball. It's my pleasure. Can you just share with us who you are, who you help, and how you do that? I'm Veronica Pang. I have more than 30 years of financial uh, experience in this uh, banking world. Starting off 15 years in investment banking, followed by this uh, fortunate chance to be in wealth management for another 15 years. Until now, I'm doing some freelance training on my own. For training, who do you, who do you help? I help the junior bankers as well as uh, lateral hires of senior bankers uh, in terms of the wealth management uh, client relationship skill sets and in helping them understand how to ask effective questions to build deeper relationship with their clients as well as some technical uh, type of a uh, training for products and services. Can I ask, you know, you, you started your banking career in Canada uh, way back in the day when it was a very white male dominated environment. How did, you know, what kind of challenge did you face being an Asian female in a Western world uh, and then coming back in Singapore in banking? Well, having to prove myself a lot okay. more by working a lot harder to be noticed and to be recognized by seniors as well uh, as uh, peers that I'm working with. And it's not easy because it's a very male-dominated industry, especially for an Asian woman in that world was uh, challenging to prove myself. Mm -hmm. uh, and also it is quite important that I work extra hard for them to be able to see a woman in this industry doing well, they must make sure that she contributes more than 100% what a male colleague is doing. Okay, wow. Can I, can I ask, you mentioned also being noticed and being recognized. It seems like, in a way, two distinct uh, actions. Notice in the sense of um, what you are doing, the kind of work that you are doing that is met the expectation given to you by your manager or by people around you. And being recognized is they know that you have contributed to the bottom line that they're expecting for you to, and in fact, even more. That's, that's very true, because often today, a lot of people work really hard, but if you don't notice it, people don't see it, then I'm not saying it doesn't value much, but it's kind of hidden away. It's right? true, yes. So it is quite important that we made ourselves known to some extent. This is what I called managing people around you and also managing people outside you, in mm. a sense, outside the firm, like your clients. Mm. It's much more powerful for the client to say good things about you to the boss than for you to say good things to the boss. Okay, so that's kind of uh, getting social proof and support from those you work with Correct. versus always yes. trying to self-boast. Yes. Can I ask, what kind of skill sets uh, or skills did you have to develop or leverage to make sure that you were noticed and recognize for your work in the finance industry? Whatever we do, it is important uh, that we have these few skill sets, uh, which will be acquired through experience as well. And also, you can al also do some shortcut way of going through training and coaching by people sharing their stories about how they handle difficult situations, be it with client or with colleagues or with your superior. Expectation management is very, very important in whatever we do. Just to give an example, during the financial crisis, I've come across these ultra-high uh, families that losing hundreds of millions of dollars. What can you do in those kind of circumstances to help them when they are, everybody's in a panic mode? You know, losing money is always the last thing that they want. Yeah. But in those circumstances, you need to help them to calm them down and make sure that they make strategic correct decision. So if I could kind of recap that as a, uh, as a modern day warrior, someone who really understands people, you know, even when things are getting really tough, 
you know, things where stress is really high, money is, you know, could be disappearing because of a financial crisis, one of the best values you can add is kind of working together, building that trust with your client. Yes, building trust and uh, relationship, especially during trying time, can really put you on a different pedestal with the clients. What happens afterwards when you, you do that actually? The clients will stick with you very long term and they will always remember you that you are not there just during good times but also during bad times. That must have helped you a lot with your career. Oh it? yes, so. I grew up a lot in that kind of a situation because every trying period is always a huge learning curve for everybody. From my understanding of your profile, because of your experience working with institutional clients and private clients on you know, very tough times, you were then asked to start training senior bankers as well. You know, what kind of skill sets do you see are quite common across you know, individuals, professionals, uh, modern day warriors who are successful in building those relationships? The, the skill sets that I see that is kind of lacking in the uh, younger generations is the inability to demonstrate the humility in dealing with uh, issues. Also the inability to, to critically solve problems with clients. If you can demonstrate your ability to solve problems in especially trying times, you demonstrate to the client that they can trust you mm. to handle their situation. And also to understand the client. It is very important that we really know the client, what is right for them not what you want them to have. If you do not align your objective with the client in some cases, it can really not work well. Cause some friction, right? Yes, yeah. cause a lot of friction and conflicts of interest as well. I'd like to go into that one a little bit more because I was investment banking as well and I saw that a lot of people would try to project what they thought their clients needed. And it's fine to make an hypothesis, but when you're out there and you're not really calibrating to what the client is actually wanting and asking for, it could be a huge mismatch. Yes, um, many banks are right now pushing products rather than giving products that suits the client's needs. So the ability to listen carefully what and understand, uh, know deep inside what clients re really need and to provide those kind of services and products you can go very far, one can go very, very far. A strong listening skill and the ability to communicate tough messages is extremely important that client-facing uh, professionals really need to learn. For our audience, what are three things they can do today to develop those skill sets of either humility, critical thinking, or uh, understanding their clientele better? Ability to articulate and communicate your ideas in a cohesive and convincing manner. A story that you put together which you should be passionate about when you do when you relate these stories to them. Because the more emotion you have in, in somehow relating to this kind of stuff, you will be more convincing. Because that's how people buy into what you are trying to say. Clients are very, very uh, smart they will know whether you made up the story or is it something that you truly believe in. Yeah. So these are skill sets that over time, it can be, it, it can be trained, it's teachable. Can I ask, you know, what are some things people can do today to develop that? There are many training courses and I hope my training courses will be able to help them. Okay, I like to share, be it a failure, a failing situation or a success story, by talking about it, People can learn from it and there's something that I would really like to offer with this 30 years of experience covering both central banks or very sophisticated client to very unsophisticated billionaires. I, I really enjoy this process of the coverage and the building of the relationship. There may be different relationship in, in terms of but ultimately it boils down to how well you communicate with them and engage them. For critical listening skills, what are three actual items can our viewers take today to start developing it? Repeating what they heard or reframing it in such a way that uh, to make sure they fully understand what they hear. At the same time, it is okay to also pause 
to reflect back what the other party is telling you. Mm. At the same time, ask deeper questions to understand further what the actual issues are. Because on the surface, it might appear to be this, but with more questioning, can bring you to a different level of information. Thank you very much, Veronica. That was very insightful. Thank you. It's my pleasure.